as you know, several years back, we uh, faced a very, very uh, unusual situation using the largest proportion and total dollars, uh, and in total dollars, the total, largest amount of money ever in the history of Virginia Commonwealth University from our appropriation. Um, most institutions around the country, public institutions, state universities did uh, have the same experience. So it gave us a chance to really think about where we had and what we would do. Um, and certainly, uh, by all measures, um, we have been able to figure out how to focus more than ever before. We had no choice, and that's been very good. Obviously, one of the most important roles that we play is with respect to workforce. It has a tremendous impact here in the, in the city of Richmond, and certainly in the Richmond uh, metropolitan region. I don't know if you know this, last year we graduated a record number of students, 7,500. We've never graduated that number of students ever before. These are people who we want to be job creators, not job takers, very creative people who will go out and stimulate the economy in multiple ways through their leadership. We want them all to be leaders in their fields, not in ever, uh, not, not ever in any way, shape, or form, garden variety. Um, you want to continue to be able to attract more talent to the region. So, well, it's a good story that we have 7,500 graduates. The downside is that most of those graduates leave the Richmond region. And we don't want that to be the case. More and more of them would love to stay if there were opportunities that matched employment-wise um, the opportunities that they have where they might go after they graduate. Um, we also have, of course, I mentioned earlier, 20,000 on our team, um, faculty and staff. We're very proud of all of them. Um, the thing that makes me most proud of them is that these are people who are the best trained oftentimes in their fields. Uh, these are the people uh, who are uh, incredibly creative and are making a very significant difference, certainly in their classrooms and laboratories, but beyond that in terms of the kinds of things that they're discovering that are actually leading their way into the marketplace and hopefully helping to create some of the jobs that are so important to the future of our economy in this region and to the Commonwealth for that matter. Um, we are a health care provider, and I'm very proud that we are a health care provider. Um, as Virginia's safety net hospital, we are also, by the way, number one ranked hospital in Virginia. Uh, very unusual that your safety net is also your number one. It's exceptionally well managed by our team. 50% um, of our patients are Medicaid or uninsured. Um, but we are absolutely focused on uh, leading edge health care for absolutely everyone in the region. And of course, our reputation has been that if you really aren't sure of what's going on and you're really worried, you come to uh, our medical center. And we're proud of that, but we want you to come to our medical center no matter what, so that we have the diverse range of, of patients that our students need to see so that their learning experience is as rich as it can possibly be. And of course, we're not only committed to care, but we're committed to cures. And we're making good, good headway in that regard as well. One of the things I wanted to specifically mention to you is something that we created called uh, Virginia Coordinated Care. We call it the VCC. It is an enormous amount of money that we invest from our health system in doctors who are in private practice in the city to help provide care for the uninsured. It has done a number of wonderful things. 30,000 patients have been involved. Far fewer visits to the emergency department. We need to reserve the emergency department, obviously, for those times that um, when people most need them. More primary care visits. And of course, our costs have dropped dramatically on a per patient basis, which is really, really important. The most important thing is not saving money as much as it is literally saving lives and saving people from a lot of the pain that many of these serious illnesses and complex diseases um, cause them. It really is a national model that's being looked at by many, including in the nation, um, as we continue to move toward the Affordable Care Act. And that makes me very proud that it's happening right here in Richmond, Virginia. And uh, our real goal, of course, is wellness, and we are making good headway along those lines. We will continue to focus on our specialty areas. Some of you know them well, some of you may not. Uh, just to review them with you, both in the context of care, but also research, cancer, heart, Virginia's only level one trauma uh, center, I should say Central Virginia's only level one trauma center, burn, transplant, and of course you'll, you'll see that we're doing more and more um, as we emerge in care for children, and certainly in, in our uh, interest in women's health as well. 
great examples right across the street, like there. Um, we are now investing $158 million in the Children's Pavilion. So I'm really proud of that. And uh, we'll be doing a whole lot more with Children's Medicine as we go forward. So I'm really, really pleased to have you in that partnership as well. We contribute significantly to the landscape of Richmond as a city. And we're very, very proud of that. Um, from housing to culture, I'm talking about arts all the way to athletics. Um, partnering to improve retail right around campus, which serves our students and our faculty and staff very well, but it also serves the city very well. And hopefully we continue to become more and more of a magnet, um, uh, uh, contrary to some opinions, so we're not trying to take over everything. We're trying to um, strategically focus in certain areas where we can help the nation to continue to turn around those areas that are important um, to the city's future development. Um, our total economic uh, contributions to the uh, impact to the uh, city, um, we estimated around $4 billion, although I have to tell you with the $2.8 billion budget, it's pretty conservative, um, but we think that we relate specifically to um, the existence of 43,000 jobs in this immediate region, and we're proud of that. Um, we have opened an Office of Economic Development. We needed to do that even in the context of our budget situation that we face now for several years. Um, it has been a very, very good investment. About half the universities make an investment in this area. Um, it's enabling us to leverage our research and brand activity out to the marketplace, but it's also helping us ensure in all of our areas, ranging from the arts, you know, the number one public arts school in the country, um, social services, business engineering, and of course, the health sciences, a lot of good ideas there. We want to leverage those ideas into the marketplace in the format of creating jobs that will be important to the future of our region. Again, an agenda is take more of those graduates, keep them here in the region so that it creates other economic activity at all levels. So we're, of course, interested for our graduates at the high end of the wage spectrum, but we know that when we create those kinds of jobs, we create jobs for everyone at every level in the, in the wage spectrum. Very, very important. And um, again, we couldn't do what we do without the incredible support that we enjoy from so much of Richmond. Um, we had a commencement speaker a few years ago come in and say, and declare rather, that we are Virginia's university. And we're very, very proud of that. We graduate more Virginians than any other public university, uh, any university for that matter, um, in the Commonwealth. That's a great thing. Um, it's also a bit of a burden um, when you lose your appropriation because you combine that with low tuition. It obviously makes it very difficult for us to sustain uh, those high winds that come from the uh, economic circumstances that we faced in the last few years, uh, but we have managed relatively well. We continue to hold our graduates to very, very, our students and graduates to very, very high expectations. They must be leaders in all of their disciplines and certainly in their communities as well, which means that they need to be mentored. And we are a people-intensive business. That's why we have so many people who are part of the VCU team and it's why our graduates are doing so well, but it's part of why they have the option to go anywhere in the world, literally, when they graduate from Virginia Commonwealth University. Again, I hope to find ways to keep more of them here in this area. And that's part of the goal with our economic development program, is to attract and, of course, retain more and more of the businesses and the talent in this region. It's one of the things that really captures um, the spirit of something that we call Bridging Richmond, which is a project that really focuses on Richmonders and what we expect of them and how we will foster our expectations of them from the time that they're born all the way into their careers. And of course, people can enter that spectrum at any, one point, at any point um, that, that they like, including as a college student who becomes a college graduate and stays here, even if they didn't grow up in um, our immediate region. We have more than 60,000 alumni who are living in, the, in this region. Now, that's out of about 150,000 alums that we keep track of through uh, addresses that we have. So it's not the majority any longer, but it is a very significant population. Um, our research program continues to break every record. We thought that we would not this year, but we certainly did, even though we lost a lot of the ARRA money, which was the stimulus money that we had uh, from the federal government uh, a few years ago. Um, we broke a record of $260 million in sponsored research this year. We are, for the first time ever, for the last two years actually, for the first time ever, 
in the top 100 among NSF's ranked institutions with federal funding and total funding for research. Right here, your university, and we are a top 200 worldwide university, um, as distinguished by uh, an agency in Shanghai. Um, so we really, really appreciate everything that you're doing to help us. Um, and one of the things that has been particularly relevant in uh, recent uh, months or so is, is our conversations with so many of the staff here, particularly the police. Um, we appreciate the partnership. We cannot be a destination unless we are a safe destination at all times. And safety continues to be our number one priority. Um, we can be a living, learning, meeting uh, environment if we are not as safe as we can possibly be. We continue to increase our partnership with the Richmond Police Department. I want to thank them. They have been wonderful. I have personally been involved in a few meetings with them, and they have been fantastic. What a great team. And certainly, we have a great team, which makes it a fantastic match. Um, we have several ongoing efforts to continue to make us a leader nationwide in terms of what we call campus safety. Um, increased visibility of police officers, we've heard a lot about that. We have a partnership with G4 Security Services. Um, our transportation system provides a ram ride shuttle bus um, for these new car holders, um, making sure that they get the location that they're seeking at the right times. Um, and we continue to work with community leaders in adjacent neighborhoods to sort of learn what's going on. Um, and we continue to interconnect with um, police um, on everything that we're thinking through and um, helping to ensure a faster response to those who need us, any of us, that is, when there is any kind of emergency. Um, we continue to leverage um, this great partnership, particularly um, in that um, we actually don't have an environment in which people from within are creating most of the problems. This is where people come from actually quite far away and prey upon UCU in particular, um, have an intent and think that there's a right opportunity for them to come in and do things that are not good in our great city, and we don't want that. So um, the police have been wonderful to work with on, on that front, and uh, we continue to leverage that partnership to um, really good results. Um, listen, I'm here mostly to say thank you to you. I wanted this chance to let you know how much I appreciate everything that you do to contribute to the vitality of this city. We're proud to play a role in that as well. We recognize, though, that the public expects us to do what we do together. We need to work together. We need to be thinking together. We need to be envisioning together. And we certainly need to be planning and executing together. Um, I, I should say implementing together. Uh, I really appreciate the relationship that we enjoy with all of you. You have been incredibly supportive of the university, of our student population, of our faculty and staff, and I look forward to um, exploring ways in which we can deepen our partnership and make more progress faster. So with that, I'd be pleased to respond to any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, Dr. Are there any questions? We'd love to speak to us. Thank you. Thank you. Up next will be the RBA Downtown's Transformation Fund. Lucy Mead, Director of Marketing Development for the Church. 